So uh, hello everyone. I'm Augustin Blanchet. I'm doing my uh, PhD under the direction of Marc Doran. You're not in presentation mode though. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, and Jean Clairement at the CEA. I'm going to present my implementation of the extended first principle molecular dynamics model for uh, high temperature simulation in Abinit. Uh, I will review uh, details of the method implementation of it and uh, some practical work on it too. So to begin uh, with uh, basic stuff, uh, we must keep in mind that we want to compute physical quantities in extreme temperature uh, condition as precisely as possible. Typically, we want to simulate matter uh, in the plasma regime uh, with temperature going from tens to thousand electron volts, uh, which is much higher than standard simulation in ability. So the main quantities that we are looking are the energy, uh, the entropy, the pressure, Electric, electrical conductivity, ionic uh, conductivity, absorption or effectivity, etc. Uh, so uh, the orbital-free codes that are normally used to perform such plasma simulations have uh, access to the, the thermodynamic and ionic uh, properties, but uh, can't get directly to uh, the electronic properties and uh, also the reference state. Uh, so it is often required to use bootstrap method to ensure continuity between models. Uh, ab initio quantum molecular dynamics method are still uh, the most appropriate way to get these quantities as precisely as possible, because they are actually solving the many body Schrodinger equation using uh, all electrons, plane waves, uh, or local basis sets, uh, etc. So um, in standard uh, plane wave DFT software, Many quantities called the wave function, for example, uh, to get the electronic uh, density while decomposing the expression with respect to the k points and the orbitals uh, weighted with the Fermi Dirac uh, distribution F. We have uh, the same approach with the kinetic energy expression, uh, where we apply uh, an operator uh, to the wave functions. Uh, and to go further, uh, the wave function are also needed to use the Kubo Greenwood formulation of conductivity, uh, which where we are, uh, we uh, are mixing uh, two uh, two orbitals uh, not uh, with not the same without the same indexes, so it can be a, a bit uh, advanced here. Uh, so at zero k or relatively low temperature, the sum uh, is bounded from zero. Uh, from zero to uh, n bond, making sure that last orbital are empty or nearly empty. But when the temperature rises, um, the sum cannot be bounded as easily, forcing us to use uh, more and more bonds, which makes the simulation really tough. Uh, usually, uh, we need to ensure a last level occupancy of around uh, or less than uh, 10 minus 4 or 10 minus 5 to get precise results. Uh, we showed in a previous paper the relation between the number of orbitals per atom and per electrons uh, that we need to take into account uh, the more the temperature rises uh, using an homogeneous uh, electron gas model. Uh, that is what uh, I show on the left here. Uh, you see that uh, the more we want to have a small uh, level occupancy, uh, so it's the color, the, the color of the curves here, um, the more you need to take orbitals into account until it reaches uh, actually a maximum here. Uh, after this point, uh, the all the curves go down. Uh, this is due to the behavior of the chemical potential that is moving to the negative value of energy uh, when the temperature rises. Uh, on the right side here, uh, we have a practical case uh, to a 64 aluminum atom system. And we see that in order to get uh, 10 minus 4 last level occupancy at uh, 100 uh, electron volts, we need uh, 50,000 uh, 50, bonds uh, at least. So that's a lot uh, when uh, we know that you also need to raise the cutoff, etc. So, so it can be very complicated to, to, uh, to simulate. Um, so, um, the first thing that we noticed when treating uh, high energy orbitals is that they are described with pure plane wave only. Uh, settings, uh, setting a high uh, plane wave cutoff uh, um, involves doing a full di uh, diagonalization work for a big, uh, nearly, uh, nearly empty matrix. Uh, this is indeed a lot of work for nothing. 
Uh, this is what uh, we see on the right side here, where I plotted the plane wave grid on the reciprocal space plane uh, z equals zero. So the dark points correspond uh, to the highly used plane wave coefficients, whereas the light points are not used at all. We, th uh, we see that only the plane waves uh, with energy close to the kinetic energy are used. Uh, in a more standard simulation, plane wave coefficients are more diffuse uh, over energy. Uh, just below, I represent um, the plane wave coefficient versus uh, the energy of the plane waves. And we integrate, uh, and I integrated uh, this uh, over all the reciprocal space. Uh, and we see a distinct peak to where, where uh, that corresponds to the kinetic energy of the, uh, the orbital. Uh, the other thing that we can notice is that uh, discrete states are, uh, at negative energy are merging into a continuum at high energy. And this uh, suggests to split computations uh, of quantity of interest into two contributions. First, uh, the classical uh, discrete summation as we do standardly from zero to n bound. And then uh, a sec uh, secondly, uh, an integral on high energy states from n bound to infinity. This was precisely the work done by Zong in their paper in uh, 2016, using the density of state of the Fermi gas. And so we will go to a similar approach, unless uh, we will use directly the Fermi gas energy, and we'll try to keep the wave function form uh, intact. <sighs> so um, on this slide, I want uh, you to show first on the right plot, um, here, uh, the kinetic uh, energy um, in green uh, matches very well the Fermi gas energy in blue. Uh, for uh, only for high energy orbitals, indeed, uh, on the right side of the of the plot. And we also show that the difference between the kinetic energy in green and the eigenvalues in red tends to be a constant. We can't uh, we can't see this in uh, this plot. Uh, uh, actually, but uh, I, I plot it, it uh, you have to, to believe me and I can, uh, I can show you if, uh, if you want. Um, so this constant zone called U0 uh, can be approximated. Uh, we will show in an upcoming paper that uh, it is actually possible to find U0 uh, without taking a buffer of bounds to average uh, the difference between eigenvalues and kinetic energy. Uh, so it can be a better implementation. Uh, so, uh, okay, so to begin, uh, we then restrict the wave function shape by imposing the plane wave coefficient whose energy matches uh, with the Fermi gas energy uh, with the form of a Gaussian function uh, with a parameter sigma we consider small. Uh, and the two main contributions uh, that are derived uh, pretty quickly have the contribution to uh, our uh, or the contribution to uh, the uh, number of electrons and the kinetic energy. From these two quantities, we can uh, derive as easily the, um, the uh, electronic density, the chemical potential, entropy, etc. So uh, the important thing to notice here is that uh, in this formulation, there is no unbounded integral to compute numerically as we approximate the Fermi integrals analytically. Um, this is, uh, these have a high importance in high temperature computations where the Fermi Dirac uh, occupation it is pretty much flat everywhere. Um, so for the implementation part, a new module dedicated to the extended uh, FPMD model is integrated at the same level as the occupation module. So it's uh, 61 in the code. Uh, the initialization is done before the SCF uh, cycle, and uh, the contributions are mainly computed in uh, Vitro uh, module, um, just after the eigenvalues, uh, uh, precisely. It is uh, also possible to start uh, with an input wave function file. Uh, so, yeah, contributions uh, are printed in the output for post-treatment. Uh, for the usage, uh, it is one parameter activated, so you just need to set ex use xtfpmd to one uh, in the input file. Uh, you also need to reduce the number of bounds. Uh, for example, in the previous uh, example, we used uh, we had to use uh, fifty thousand bounds, and uh, in this case of this implementation, you can just 
put 1000 bands and the rest will take care of it. Um, a warning is sent if the error uh, is over a predefined threshold. Um, uh, okay, you also need, uh, yeah, you also need uh, to make sure to use small core on all electron pseudo uh, or all electron pseudo potentials because core electrons will be impacted at high temperature. And we also need to mention that the cutoff energy is still need uh, the cutoff energy convergence is still needed uh, and can be still pretty high due to the core electrons in our pseudo potentials. Uh, so for the next slides, I'll propose a test of the static FCC aluminium uh, simulations at, at uh, 20 V of temperature. So on this page, I represent the electron density error on the plane Z equals zero uh, with a reference simulation done uh, with uh, 512 uh, bands per atom, which put uh, the last level occupancy of in fire to the machine precision. Uh, so on the left, uh, this is the computation done with only 32 bands per atom without any contribution. So we see uh, a lot of dark red spots, which corresponds to the high error zones. Uh, so where the error is more than the percent. And uh, on the middle and on the right, um, th uh, this is the same computation done, but uh, with uh, the extended FPMD model. And uh, we see that there is no more dark red zone anymore. Uh, so the, the error is lower, typically uh, under a, per uh, a percent. So to extend the test, uh, I plotted every quantity where uh, the extended FPMD models add uh, a contribution to get, uh, to get uh, these quantities. So um, let's take, for example, the pressure. Uh, following the, the red line that indicates the uh, uncorrected pressure, we see that uh, the less bounce we take into account, uh, the, the less uh, the less the pressure is accurate, actually. Um, and uh, whereas uh, on the other side for the, for the, uh, the blue and orange curves, um, we see that it's, they, they converge pretty quickly uh, due to the, to the contribution that we added uh, previously. So uh, we built a, a new new equation of state for the aluminum using the extended uh, model. Uh, which makes uh, us use temperatures uh, from uh, one electron volt to uh, 11 kilo electron volts. Uh, so, uh, and we also use densities from uh, 0, 1, rho 0 to 10, rho 0, which makes us use uh, 27 uh, gram per cubic centimeter. Uh, we see that uh, the points uh, on the uh, on the right are very comparable with the, the PMC plus DFT methods that the driver uh, uh, calculated on a, a paper. Um, okay. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, we note that uh, the last dynamics are very at very high temperature. So this part here, let's say over uh, uh, ten. Uh, 10 power 7 uh, kelvins are done pretty quick because um, to give an, an example, I think I never use more than a hundred or uh, a thousand or two thousand bands on each dynamic. So it's very low compared to what you, you should uh, you should take uh, on normal simulation. We did the same thing for boron. Uh, so Z equal five. And by, but we, we extended a lot uh, our number of simulations. Uh, we took a grid of uh, 384 full molecular dynamics. And uh, with temperature goes from uh, 300K to 44 kilo electron volts. And the uh, same going from two very high densities. So to 20 or 0, so 50 gram per cubic centimeter. So, at the same thing as before, we see that uh, it is uh, it is also in very good agreement with PMC plus DFT uh, simulation. Uh, I did a simple test to evaluate the speed up. Uh, the more important uh, thing to notice here is that uh, the computing time is no more dependent uh, on the temperature as uh, it is with a standard uh, simulation. So in red, you see the standard simulation temperatures goes as uh, uh, 
T uh, power three, so it's, it's a lot. And uh, on the, the blue one, so the extended first principle model um, uh, here, uh, you see that it's pre pretty much flat with respect and to the temperature. Uh, and we have uh, also the same, uh, the same uh, observation uh, on, um, uh, when, consider uh, when considering the number of bonds per atom. It's the same. Because uh, it tends to be uh, flat. Sorry, Augusta, can you just uh, accelerate? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's the last slide. <laughs> so to conclude, uh, the extended uh, FPMD model will soon be available on Abinit. It has been merged to nine, version 9.5.2. Uh, so it's the current day version, I think. Um, so you are all invited to test it when, when it will be released. Um, so, OK, thank you for your attention. And feel free to ask me any question if you have. OK, thanks, Augusta. So there is a. Uh... Question, one question in, in the chat by Xavier. Uh, for, for aluminum, which pseudopotential did you use? Uh, where the 2s and 2p electrons in the core or in the valence? And where the 1s electron in the core or in the valence? And what was then the a cut? So for the aluminum, I took a uh, all electron pseudopotential uh, from the beginning to the end of the simulation. So even from uh, for a, uh, a uh, one one thousand k, I uh, took uh, the all electron potential that was made by uh, Vanina Rekul. and uh, okay, so the cutoff energy was uh, pretty high, but not that high. I think it was a uh, hundred R three, and uh, to get uh, an energy with uh, the with respect to the. To, I think it was converged to 10 minus two, uh, something like that. So yeah, but uh, I use uh, uh, an electron to do potentials. Okay, and the uh, question by Mathieu, do you need a larger a cut just to get inner states in the Hamiltonian? Did I understand that correctly? Uh, I'm not sure to understand the question. Larger e cut. At some point you mentioned ah. you needed a, a larger e cut than than expected. Yeah. And I was wondering if that's just to get a Hamiltonian that's big enough to have yeah. these 50,000 states or? OK, no, actually, no. The states that are, uh, that are computed with the extended uh, FPMD model is, is not, uh, are not uh, passing through the, the classical uh, uh, diagonalization uh, parts, et cetera. So the ECAT uh, will not, uh, yeah, yeah. Will not uh, impact uh, that, that state. So the, the ECAT should be high because you have to uh, to take a, um, a small core uh, pseudopotential, yeah, yeah. so you have to. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like for the aluminum, uh, the, the aluminum, I think uh, the radius uh, was one bar, and uh, in that I I I, I didn't had uh, many overlap. But of course, as you are treating very high temperature, uh, you have to take a small uh, pseudopotential uh, radius because yeah. uh, whereas there is a lot of uh, overlap, so. Uh, but no, the, the cut is, uh, is over. 